I'm going to call the regular meeting of council order for Monday, March 20th, 2023. Uh, before the approval of the agenda, I'm going to put a motion on the floor to remove 8.2 from the agenda, zoning amendment bylaw number 723-2023. Need a seconder. Councillor Julik. Discussion. So I'll, I'll just make comments that staff has asked us to be removed. There's a couple things they need to change and add to it first. Okay, any more discussion? Call the question on removing uh, 8.2 from the agenda. All in favor? Carried. Okay, and then I'll take the approval of the agenda. Councillor Julik. That the March 20th, 2023 regular council meeting agenda be adopted as amended. Seconder. Councillor Dussault. All in favor? Carried. Adoption of minutes. Uh, February 13th, 2023, special meeting of council minutes. Recommendation. Councillor Dussault. That the February 13th, 2023, special meeting of council minutes be adopted as presented. Seconder, Councillor Julik. Any errors or omissions? Okay, call the question. All in favor? Carried. March 6, 2023, regular meeting of council minutes. Recommendation, Councillor Julik. That the March 6, 2023, regular meeting of council minutes be adopted as presented. Seconder, Councillor Clickash. Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Carried. March 13, 2023, special meeting of council minutes. Recommendation. Councillor Dussault. That the March 13th uh, special meeting with council minutes be adopted as presented. Seconder. Councillor Clickash. Any errors or omissions? All in favor? Carried. Any business arising for the minutes? Staff. Okay. Council? Consent agenda, recommendation. Councillor Gillick. Oh, sorry, can you push my button again? <laughs> that all items in the March 20th, 2023 consent agenda be moved for information. Seconder. Councillor Dussault. Uh, are there any items in the consent agenda that council wants to bring forward for discussion? Councillor Gillick. <laughs> I would like to bring forward 7.3. I just have a couple quick questions. Okay. Council Norbert. Thank you, Mayor Kukalka. I need to recuse myself as I uh, monitor interests and elaborate. I work there. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So Council Norbert is zooming in and staff is going to put him into a waiting room and on mute. So he won't be able to hear the discussion. Councilor Gillick. Oh, actually, sorry. For discussion, I need a seconder. Councilor Hoffman, all in favor? Carried. Councillor Julik. Um, so I just wanted to get some clarification. Um, it's saying, and I read this letter in my email, so I'm just clarifying. Um, the library appears in a previous agenda as grant and aid. It is not currently thought of as a grant and aid, correct? Uh, it's a line item, but go to staff. It's the way it's, it has to be in there because of uh, they're not part of the district. Uh, Ms. Torville? That is correct, uh, Mayor Krakalka. Okay. So, so the reason they're in the grant and aid and fee for service is because they are a line item, but because they're not actually ran by the district of Bridge, it's still rather giving them a fee for service or the grant and aid to run their uh, board. Okay. So it's just uh, like I'm thinking for the library board so that they just know that this is the meeting to say you're listed as that, even though we understand that you are not a grant and aid or a fee for service. Okay. Can I do a follow up? Ms. Torval? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, and um, they've also mentioned that the library manager is not invited to answer these questions. Is it possible for them to come in? Is that something that, like, I'm not sure how that works. Like, the other department heads, do they talk to the CFO and then, like, have that discussion? Yeah, so it'll be, it'll be decided by council for them to come in as a delegation. They're a delegation. They don't speak at, at the staff table because they're not staff of the district of Tumbler Ridge. 
Okay. Um, they're talking about long, and I'm just looking at, at streamlining um, because they've mentioned that it's led to long, laborious back and forth discussions around the council table and multiple presentations by the library that could have been avoided. Um, so I'm just wondering if staff wonders if or feels like there could be another process that could be followed that maybe council could approve. Ms. Torval. Thank you, um, council. This is a process that has been followed for a number of years, and I don't, uh, I can't, I don't know of anything that would make it, uh, that streamline it more efficiently at this point in time, but they do submit their budget, and, um, and it comes to council, and it's just like the rest of us, when we submit our budget to departments, uh, then council will deliberate and ask questions and whatnot, so. Okay, so it's like at our at our budget meetings. Can I ask? Sorry. No, nope. ask directly to me. Okay, so is it like our budget meetings, like when we had that meeting, and um, so I had a question, and Mr. Bradley would answer it. It's that same kind of idea. It's a delegation. They, they come would as, come as a delegation. They come as a delegation staff, with all their paperwork. Same idea. Yep, and then okay. we can ask questions directly to the library board. Okay. So normally, I know in the previous they've sent their staff, but really and truly, we're giving money to the library board, not their employee. Right. Now, if that's up to them, if they want to bring their employee, but to me, it's the board that we're looking to discuss with, because the board is who we give our funds to. We don't give the funds okay. nope. to the library sure. um, librarian. Okay. Nope. That sounds good. That answers my questions. Thank you, Councillor Hoffman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, given the Municipal Library Act, I'm just wondering if there might be better ways to organize this. Have we looked in how other uh, municipalities deal with their library? Because I understand that it's not literally a district employee, but it doesn't fit in a grant aid at all. And I don't understand why you can't make a different line item or a different section and just organize it in another way. Obviously, their board doesn't like this repeated grant and aid thing. So uh, I just think that there's probably a better way for both managing as a budget item and having interactions between district and if you want to call it separate library. It's part of our town. Like whether you want to call it, we're funding it. I, I don't see why we have to be limited on how we're organizing it. So the main question is, have we looked at other ways of doing this? For example, other municipalities. Ms. Torval. Yes, thank you, Council. I appreciate your question. Um, the library, when the library, be, when our library became a municipal library and became a, uh, a line item in our budget, uh, there were other uh, libraries that were uh, uh, researched and to see how they were because it was only in, uh, I think it was 2012 that the library became a municipal library and this is through bylaw. Mm -hmm. And so the bylaw that we're using is as per the, uh, the Library Act. And there are guidelines in there as well. Uh, with respect to the streamlining and the getting the information and where they fit in our budget, um, I'm not 100% sure about that, but they are a line item on our, in our budget, but because of the, the, the district is granting them funding. So it's, it's calculated through the grant need um, process. So not the process where they fill out the application, but they're, they're, it's, it's a place to put them, like a placeholder to put that funding, so. In and out. Councillor Hoffman. Thank you. I mean, I understand that's kind of the whole point here. You have a placeholder for them. They, for whatever reason, don't appreciate the placeholder. And I'm just, I, I look at it too. Like if I'm looking at it, I think the library is a very important part of the town. I think it's critical. And if that's the difference between them making them feel that they're more town than grant, I, I would like to look at an alternative as opposed to how it's being done now. Um, I'm not saying on how who reports to who and how that that's not the council's purview, but I still, I I'd like to see something other than how we've been doing it uh, going forward. Yeah, I think this may be something we could ask Natalie if there's if there's if she's seen it, and if not, ask for a report to come back from staff. That'd be my my, my thoughts. But Natalie might have an idea, and uh, I'll be honest, I, it's not something I get involved in in regards to the background of the bylaw and, and how the Library Act runs. I just know previously that's how it's come up. It's I mean it's always been a line item. I understand the grant and aid and fever service where it's allocated at, 
because that's where it's allocated in the total funds too that are submitted to the library. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the idea that I believe is so that uh, council of the day can deliberate on the budget is, is my thoughts, but there might be a way of asking Natalie that or reaching out to other uh, municipalities that are doing the uh, municipal library instead of uh, through the other way. Councillor Julik. Sorry. Yeah, and I, I guess my concern is only that this council and this staff knows that it's used as a placeholder. Um, I haven't read the bylaw or the act, so I'm not sure what that looks like, but that would be my concern going forward is just that it's written somewhere so that if we aren't able to take another step, that it's, it's somewhere in the language that it's a placeholder or something, because I just want to make sure that then we're not jumping through a bunch of hoops or another council or other staff isn't jumping through hoops. So yeah, if we can do some more, um, like ask Natalie and um, I'll do my homework and look up the act and the bylaw and go from there as well. Yeah. And, and Natalie's here uh, Monday for budget. Councillor Hoffman. Thank you. And just for Councillor Julek, the, there's not much in the act. It is not well written. It is not set up as a uh, sort of model act, which I think would have helped everybody out if they had. Uh, but by, by all means, go through. I'm happy to discuss it with you. But it's not going to, it doesn't really help in this question. So I just wanted to make that clear for you, that's all. Okay, any more discussion? I um, guess my, my comment or my question back to staff would be, did we respond back to the uh, board chair with Tumbler, Tumbler Ridge uh, Public Library, Trent Ernest? Yes, okay. Thank you. Is there anything else in the consent agenda council would like to bring forward for discussion? Okay, or we can wait till the budget and talk to Natalie and then go from there, but that's up to council. I, I, that's all I thought I was waiting maybe Ask that question to Natalie. Maybe she has the realm of it. Okay. Uh, I do have some other items. Or just, uh, just. Councillor Julek. Um, so for the Wings of Care and the BC Lyme Support Group, they both are asking for us to share that so information. Are you going to bring oh, sorry, Council Mulberry back first? Oh, sorry. Um, so my question has to so do... So is this, which one would you like to bring forward for discussion? It can be either or. It's, it, so 7.4 uh, for discussion. I need a seconder, please. Councillor Hoffman, all in favour? Opposed? Carried. Councillor so, Julik. Um, they ask if we could share, um, like even if it's a good word and a share. Do we have a policy if we, when we get these letters or are they just for our information? Ms. Torval. Thank you. Uh, this is for your information, okay, yeah, for council's information. Well, Council Julek. So when uh, when we get a letter like this about asking us to share, we unless a councilor brings it forward and asks staff to share it, or yeah, it would have <laughs> then to be it a, doesn't a, go. Exactly. Otherwise, it's just for our information. It's just correspondence. They send it out to all municipalities, cities. Um, okay. Obviously, they're doing their due diligence from behind them. Okay. That's probably one of their advocacy pieces is to hit the municipalities and, and stuff like okay. that to get their information out. Cool, thanks. Okay. And did you want any more discussion in regards to 7.4? Okay, Council Julik, you wanted to bring 7.5 as well? Same question. So okay I would, with it? yeah, that's good. Okay, Council, have anything more they want to bring in regards to discussion um, from the consent agenda? Okay, move on to bylaws, 8.1. Zoning amendment bylaw number 722, 2023. Report dated March 20th, 2023 from Deputy Corporate Officer regarding zoning amendment bylaw number 722, or 722, 2023 for adoption. Recommendation, please. Councillor Julik. That the zoning amendment bylaw number 722, 2023 be adopted. Seconder. Councillor Clickash. Discussion? Okay, call the question, all in favor? Carried. Uh, new business, 9.1 transfer station costs and revenues. Report dated March 20th, 2023 from the Director of Operations and Infrastructure regarding the transfer station costs and revenues 
recommendation from council. Councillor Julik. That council receives this report for discussion. Seconder. Councillor Dussault. All in favor? Carried. Councillor Julik. Um, I thought it was a great report. Thank you very much oh, for this. this. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, my question is how, like, so I'm looking at the chart, and so. No. Yes, I'm looking at the chart, and why is the truck two only 0.5 FTE? I know this is probably a simple answer, but I just don't know it off the top of my head. I feel like they still have to do the whole, the whole town, so I felt like it should be a 1.0. My yeah. So my understanding is because it only had to run part time. It only run on the same day as recycled. But my apologies to staff because I want to stop to do an overview, and that'll help. So um, they can ask answer your question at the same time. But if staff could just give an overview, overview, Ms. Torbell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this uh, report has come about as a result of a notice of motion from Council, and uh, Mr. Bradley has worked on this, so I'm going to ask Mr. Bradley to uh, give you an overview. Mr. Bradley. Thank you, okay. Mayor and Council. Uh, it was asked that we uh, increase our garbage pickup throughout the district. Uh, in doing so, uh, the requirement would be to have an extra truck uh, brought into service. Uh, with that, you would need an additional operator. Uh, we put in an operator at half time because we would be doing just an additional run of garbage. Um, I'm not sure if that would require a full-time employee uh, year-round. Um, the requirement would be a new truck. We do have a backup truck right now. Um, that's exactly what it is, is it's just a backup at this point in time. Uh, I would say that uh, the recommendation would be to look more closely at the additional bins. Uh, one time purchase of $150 and $175 a year added to your taxes. So, so just on that, <clears throat> my apology to staff, but we're one ahead. So we're actually on 9.1. So my apologies, I uh, just talked to my uh, co-partner here and my co-counselor. We're actually talking in regards to the transfer station costs and revenues. <clears throat> so my apology, I know the question came in regards to the second um, one that I'm assuming will come for discussion later. But if we could just get an overview from staff in regards to 9.1. Thank you. No, no that's my well, apologies. That's, that's fine. I'll ask Mr. Bradley to uh, give an overview on this one as well as he worked on this one too, so. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, it was uh, asked uh, by previous Council for a breakdown of this report, uh, just so we knew kind of where we were standing with uh, revenues and expenditures. Uh, as you can see, we are running a higher deficit this year. There are some reasonings for that. Um, we did an additional cleanup down at the transfer station uh, to kind of become in compliance. Uh, also, we did an above ground uh, storage area cleanup earlier on in the year. So there is cost that's related to that. Um, yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, just nope. trying to think of ways to reduce our cost for this year, uh, which is why in budget I've asked for improvements for the area. Um, I'm hoping to reduce the tipping fees, uh, which we're currently paying an exorbitant amount for. Um, also with PRD, um, they're looking out of the ways to reduce coming out for tipping. Uh, they're looking at uh, potential compactor trailer units, uh, so they don't have to come out here three times a week. They'll only be coming out here once a week, hopefully. Uh, but that won't be taking place until later in the fall. Uh, I would like to start stockpiling our steel again, so that we're not uh, kind of, right now we're in, sitting in a situation where we're a bit of a wash with the trucking to what we make off the steel. So I'd like to stockpile again so that we're not paying for the trucking weekly. Uh, we'll be doing this every six months, hopefully, uh, with the layout. Um, we did have position uh, that was down there that wasn't budgeted for. So I, I've removed a position down there, and I've now put that individual in a, a budgeted position. So I hope that's clear for you guys. No, thank you very much to the staff. Is there any, any questions in regards to 9.1? Councillor Julik. 
So just to clarify, tipping fees are the costs of the people to come and pick up the garbage and stuff? Okay, that's what I thought, but I thought, well, I better clarify. So the solid waste admin, is that the big price there, the 137 from the 76, is that the unbudgeted uh, position, do you think? Ms. Torval? That's fine, thank you, Mr. Bradley. Uh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> and the transfer station, that's a fairly big number there as well. So I just was curious as, as to why the big change there. Ms. Torval. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. I'm sorry, I'll have to get you more information on that line item. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Councillor Hoffman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was wondering on the recycling side of things with 200,000 line item, is that like building costs and other such things? Is that like a general one? Or I'm just wondering why recycling is costing more than anything else? Ms. Torval. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Okay, thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, yes, recycling is more expensive. Uh, we have a uh, few more employees that uh, have to deal with the recycling as far as sorting. Uh, we pay more for trucking uh, to get our items out of uh, Tumbler Ridge as far as bales um, and styrofoam and whatnot. Uh, there's just there's a lot more hands that are involved in this particular situation. Follow up, Councillor Hoffman. Okay, is there any more questions regards to 9.1? Okay, move on to 9.2. Costs associated with implementing additional solid waste curbside service. Report dated March 20th, 2023 from the De Director of Operations and Infrastructure regarding co the costs associated with implementing additional solid waste curbside service. Recommendation, Councillor Dussault. That council received this report for information. Okay, before I go there, is there anybody wanting to discuss it? Okay, I'll go to Councillor Julik. That council received this. Hang on a second, sorry, I got too many people on. There you go. That council received this report for your discussion. Okay. Seconder, Councillor Dissot. All in favor? Carried. Uh, appreciate the staff gave an overview earlier. Um, I think we'll just go through and do an overview again in regards to 9.2. And then we'll go to questions for council. Ms. Torval. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bradley. Again. Okay. Thank you again, Mayor and Council. Uh, yes. So what we've given you is I've given you what it costs to run our main garbage truck uh, on a weekly basis um, or an alternating weekly basis. Uh, and then I gave you the breakdown of what it would cost to implement a second truck. Uh, the reason why we need a second truck for this, uh, for it to be facilitated, is because with uh, garbage, we set up for garbage uh, for one week. At the end of the week, then we wash out the truck, make sure there's no contaminants in it so that we don't cross-contaminate the recycling. And then the following week is all uh, strictly for recycling. Uh, in order to be able to be efficient with this, you would have to have two trucks because at the end of every day, you would have to clean out the truck to get it ready for recycling and still have to get out there and collect. Um, so the cost that I've, we've put into place here for the second truck uh, it would be another, another new truck for the fleet um, because we do have a spare at this point in time, but it's also an aging unit. It's exactly that, it's a spare. Uh, I don't think it would be able to uh, handle the weekly workload again. Um, we would also have to hire a, another individual to run the, the truck, so. There are some uh, elevated costs, but you would also increase the tipping fees by at least 50%. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Torval. Uh, one thing I'll say is appreciate the report, both reports, very thorough. Um, have all the numbers out <clears throat> right in front of council. Um, and you know, to me, we didn't miss any. We have the insurance costs, the fuel costs, labor costs. New truck, if that's what it was staff thinks is needed. I guess my only question is, and, and would be, and I read it, but I think it just should be uh, known or talked about, and that's the purchase for additional bear resistant collection cart, which is for garbage. It's a 150 one time amount. Is that correct, Mr. Revel? That is correct. Okay. And then just another thing that staff had mentioned in the report the pickup fee for the additional bear resistant collection cart is 175 per year. That is correct. 
Thank you. So to me, like I understand, um, Councilor Norberry brought this forward in regards to residents' concerns and, and stuff like that in regards to excess garbage and, and some families that are larger having problems. <clears throat> and that was one of the things I was looking for was in regards to the, the, the extra bin. There was lots of numbers thrown out on Facebook, uh, people talking uh, within the community. You know, it was 300 bucks for an extra bin. It was $500 for an extra bin. To me, it's black and white. It's 150 one-time purchase. And then obviously you'd have to pay the 175 yearly to have it picked up for, to have a second garbage bin. So uh, I thank staff for those numbers. I mean, they're clear. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Councillor Julik. Um, yeah, I echo what uh, Mayor Kakauka, uh just said. Um, I agree with, because uh, uh, I actually thought it was a rental once a year. So a one-time purchase of 150, hey. Um, the other question I would have, I, I appreciated the alternative to increasing waste services is to reduce weight and is to reduce waste and the food cycler program. I was kind of interested in a little bit of that. I didn't know if that was something we could explore. Um, I know I often talk about doing like composting. <laughs> I know that's something we discourage also because of bare stuff, but if there was an option for me to do something like that, I think that I would do it. I'm guessing that wouldn't be a curbside thing. That would be something I'd have to take care of. Anyways, I was interested in getting some more information on this about costs and stuff, if that was the flavor of the rest of council, but I'm, yeah, it's, it, I appreciated it being in the report. Uh, maybe staff can, can speak to that. And we talk about bare issues. I mean, one of them is Nel uh, uh, Nelson, BC, I mean, somewhat similar to Tumblr. Uh, maybe staff could talk to that. If it's in their report, I imagine they did a little bit of digging around for it. Uh, Ms. Torval? Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, Ms. Finnegan has done some research on this, and uh, I'll ask her to speak to it. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So the, the food cycler is a, a countertop. Um, it probably is the size of a, a bread maker little unit. Uh, I've been trialling one at home for probably the last two or three months. What you do is you take your wet compost or your wet waste, vegetable peels, um, food waste, pop it into this little cycler, it grinds it and dries it out and it actually comes out as dehydrated compost. You can then take that and add it to a topsoil in your garden or um, maybe donate it up to the community garden. So there are several communities around BC and across Canada that have been trialling this. There is funding opportunities for us to do a shared cost kind of a program and we can certainly bring that back uh, to the community. Uh, the cost of a community buying for that per resident would be the same as buying an additional bin. Uh, but as you pointed out, the, the opportunity to reduce waste um, is fantastic. What we've actually found personally, it's made us aware of some of our other habits and we've actually reduced uh, and found other ways to reduce our waste. So um, certainly there's lots of help and information out there. We can bring back some in more detail. I appreciate that. I know Doss Creek had, had come forward with this program as well. Um, they were doing draws within the city for them. Uh, I got Councillor Norbury, then Councillor Hoffman. Councillor Norbury? No, can't hear you. Hang on a second. There we go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Finnegan, for that explanation of the food cycler program. Um, I believe. Um, with Ms. Wilbur, um, as a part of the Self Peace Health Services Society, was also interested in that, brought it up to us, um, dropped off a couple bins maybe, so there might be some kicking around downstairs. Um, but to the report, um, thank you staff for bringing this report forward. It was something that I asked for because of uh, a lot of concerns from residents. <clears throat> The only question that I would have is just so that we have no stone left unturned. What is the approximate amount of time required to, say, say clean the vehicle from recycling, pick up garbage, and then um, clean it again for recycling the next day? I mean, that would be realistically, if we didn't want to buy a truck and we just wanted to offer the same service with the same truck, would the half-time FTE position still be sufficient or would that require like a full-time position and we're going till 9, 10 o'clock? Just the only question that I had. Thanks again, staff. It's a great report. Ms. Torval. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bradley, are you able to answer my question? Yeah. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Mr. Norbury. Uh, 
as it stands right now, uh, the truck is usually back in the yard by 3.30, quarter to 4. Uh, they do a hosing of the, the truck to get it ready for the next day. Um, that is on our regular route. So if you want to increase that and double the route, uh, I would say it'd be a rough guesstimate, but double the time. So it would you would be paying overtime every day. Councilor Norby, that answers your question. Um, not not quite. So, sorry, Mr. Bradley, but the, the question: I had, What if we hired a whole a whole different staff member? So, um, if if the truck's coming in at three, so that we're approximately doing garbage for seven hours, so um, clean up you know, a little extra time than seven more hours to do another round of um, garbage. Mr. Torval. Mr. Bradley. Okay, uh, Mr. Norberry, I hope I, I have what you want for this, but that would be the operator of that halftime position. And I have it recorded here as $45,000 in additional uh, salary for the year. I'm not sure if that's what you're looking for, uh, but a full-time position would be double that 45, so. Not sure that answer, Councilor Norby. So my understanding from from staff would be, it would be the 0.5 employee working from three to whatever time they finish the run, five days a week. Yeah, it would be every second week. Yeah, it'd be, you'd have to double it. Does that answer your question? You just have to double that number. Okay. Councilor Hoffman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a recollection, and maybe I'm. Missing something. Uh, the other question I had from before was if we use the larger equivalent recycling size bins, would the current truck be able to handle a larger load? I think that might be another alternative of not necessarily doing two bins, but doing one larger bin. Ms. Torval. Thank you, uh, Council. I'll defer to Mr. Bradley. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Uh, so when I reached out to staff about a larger bin, uh, the reason why they are a 65-gallon bin is because uh, garbage is denser, it's heavier, mm -hmm. there's less airspace, and it's for the safety of the operators Okay. Uh, having to move the bins around. Say no more. Uh, on top of that, though, I'd like to just reiterate that we do have 200 of these garbage bins in stock. <laughs> uh, so okay. to purchase additional bins, uh, that wouldn't be responsible. Follow up, Councillor Hoffman? No, that's that's a straight answer. Okay. Any more questions? Councillor Julik. Um, just as you speak of bins, 181 bins, we still have an inventory. So let's say we had a rush on them. Are they hard to access? Like, let's say all 181 people, 181 houses decided they need to pick up. Is it a big deal to get other bins if we need it? Ms. Torval. Thank you, uh, Council. I'm going to say no, it isn't a big deal. We can get them readily available but just to mr. Bradley to confirm that is true yes uh, last year we got stock in the summertime so uh, I would say they're readily available thank you any more questions in regards to 9.2 okay moving on to 9.3 geotechnical report cost for upper bench Gwillem slash Sakunka. Report dated March 20th, 2023 from the Director of Economic Development and Tourism regarding the geotechnical report cause for the upper bench for information or discussion. Councillor Julik. That council receives this report for discussion. Seconder. Councillor Hoffman. All in favor? Carried. Councillor Julik. Um, <clears throat> so what I was reading in here was uh, like, so the pricing is about $3,000. So what I'm, I have um, two questions. One, those reports would be lot specific is what I'm understanding. Cause if you were one of these uh, where the moratorium is right now, you would get the, you would pay the $3,000 approximately to get the report done. My concern because I'm guessing it's lot specific. If it's lot specific, could it affect neighboring lots if work was done? Like that was something that we talked about before. Ms. Torval. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. I will ask uh, Ms. Finnegan if she can, she's prepared to answer that. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, the 
for that individual homeowner would be lot specific. However, when I chatted to the engineering firm, they would take into account any uh, knock-on effects if something was done at the back of the property and take into account if it would affect any other neighbours. So they, they wouldn't necessarily do a, a geotech on each neighbour either side, but they would certainly take into account, and they particularly reference the the older reports that mention and have already had all of that work done, they would rely heavily on those reports as well. Follow-up, Councillor Julik? Uh, no, that answers my question. Thank you. Any more questions in regards to a 9.3? I know we moved forward, but I am going to go back to 9.2. And I was just because, um, Councillor Julik, you brought forward something about looking at more information in regards to the food cycler. Uh, and I'm just wondering, like, again, you, you were looking for Council's input. Um, to me, staff would need direction to move forward and bringing any more information back to Council to make a decision if this was something that Council wanted to uh, look into, uh, a cost. I mean, obviously, there was, there was talk from staff that there can be some sh cost sharing. I mean, there could still be a cost to the to the taxpayer if they wanted one in their household. But if council wants this, this would be the time to put a motion on the floor to get that. Uh, my apologies to Councillor Julik for missing that. Um, I would like to make a motion uh, to ask staff to come back with um, costs in costs involved in the food cycler municipal program for the district of Tumbler Ridge. Seconder, I'll second that. Discussion. Okay, call the question all in favor. Carried. And my apologies. So we'll go back to 9.3. <laughs> I just remembered that and I didn't want to lose it. Lose cool, thanks. Just so we gave clear direction. So is there any more questions in regards to the geotechnical uh, report for costs for the upper bench? Okay. And I guess just um, to staff, are we looking for any direction from council in regards to this? Ms. Torvald? No, sorry. Uh, no, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. No, this was a request from uh, from Council, so it's in your hands. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to 9.4. Electronic marquee sign, report dated March 20th, 2023, from the Manager of the Recreation, Manager of Recreation, presenting a request information about the electronic marquee sign for information or discussion. Councillor Dussault. That council receives the electronic marquee sign report for information or discussion. Yeah, you, do you want to, you, you get a, um, it's either for discussion or for information. Oh. They have it in there, it's up to us if we want to discuss it or, or for information. Discussion. Okay. Seconder, Councillor Julik. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, Councillor Dussault, do you want to start us off, or are you good? Okay, Councillor Gillick. Um, I'm really happy to have this because um, I was against the sign. Now that I see the price just to remove it, um, and the, um, the three customers in the report that are happy with it, I'm happy to go ahead with, like, so when it comes to budget, I'll be saying I'm good to go with that. My only other question is, um, I know in the past, or what I understand from in the past, the previous sign, commercial users were not allowed to, um, the policy was that we weren't, commercial users were not allowed to put stuff up. So I'm, inter I'm glad to see that there's a possibility that may be coming forward. And I don't know if that's something we would have to set policy on or not, but um, I appreciate the report and I'm in favor of changing it out. Yeah, and we ever decided to change the policy in regards to that would have to be direction by council. Uh, Councillor Dussault. Um, yeah, I just uh, reiterate what uh, Councillor uh, Julik said there uh, with this report. This is this is really good here. So, um, yeah, I totally support that that new sign for sure. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, and again, I just want to thank staff for the report. Reached out to the communities that other uh, or got the recommendation from the. Uh, the company that where they've installed them, and I mean they've installed them in the north. I mean I look at the Grand Cache uh, one that they've installed, and Grand Cache has a lot of winds, so kind of kind of you know I think that was my concern is the wind, the blowing snow hitting that screen, and seemed to always fry. So again I appreciate staff bringing forward the uh, full report. 
Any more discussion in regards to 9.4? Okay. 9.5, Tumble Ridge Youth Service Society Lease Agreement Renewal. Report dated March 20th, 2023 from the facilities manager seeking the renewal of the lease agreement with Tumble Ridge Youth Service Society. Recommendation, Councillor Julik. That council directs administration to renew the Tumbler Ridge Youth Services Society lease agreement for a three-year term commencing December 1st, 2022 and ending December 1st, 2025. And that council approves the renewal lease agreement as presented. Seconder, Councillor Dussault. Discussion. Councillor Julik. Um, so I've had a few concerns brought to me from the community in regards to the youth centre. Um, and with the understanding, I know that we're coming out of COVID, um, but it's mentioned in here about the having a safe place for young people to go. I've had parents express concern to me that it's not a safe place, um, that it's, it's intimidating uh, the way it's set up, um, that there's a lack of programming and um, there's religious aspects that are part of the, and I know that's like a hit and miss conversation and it's kind of all over and I know that from being part of the board at one time. Um, but those are some concerns I have. And so to give a three year lease for me right now without having a record of what their regular activities are, what that looks like, what their numbers are, um, maybe, maybe the district would be better suited to run programming. We have some pretty great people that run programming for youth. Um, and, and maybe they're just at, I, I, would, I would be more comfortable having the Youth Services Society come in with some more information um, because it's, it's a really ideal space. There's a rock climbing wall there. Um, I, I feel like some more information for me would be more comfortable for before I voted in the positive on this. Right now, I would be voting against this. <clears throat> so I guess, so I guess that, 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 I mean, I think go around council and, and, and for, to uh, debate it, but I mean, we can also defer this and ask staff to reach out to the Youth Service Society board and ask them if they'd be willing to come in as a delegation to council. We can get some more clarity on that. Uh, I know I've reached out to some of the people on the board, talked to some people, past people on the board, uh, but it never hurts to, to engage uh, those boards uh, and to see if there's any other assistance the district can give, if maybe there needs to be some clarity. Uh, I'd be fine with that too, but um, Councillor Nobury. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Kikalka. So at this time, I'm not really in favor of um, deferring or um, anything like that. <clears throat> I think if we have concerns with the youth center, it would be best that uh, we, as a council, have that discussion and we can send that through our liaison or we can set up like a, you know, a meeting with the Youth Services Society, talk about how we can support them in, in these areas. But at this point in time, um, there's only one, there's no other place for youth outside of the high school that they can go. Um, I mean, I know we do some things af after school around the community, but this is their center and I'd, I'd absolutely hate for them to not have this place for themselves to go. Um, I don't think any place anywhere in the community is perfect, um, but it's still pretty good. I mean, I know there are quite a, it is very well used and I would hate for us to put that in jeopardy. So I'm in favor of, of this lease. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Councilor Norbert. My thing is, even if you defer it, it doesn't uh, suspend the lease. The lease they've been running without a lease anyways. It's just to get clarity, but it doesn't mean that we can't ask them. Even if it was the past, to have them come in the, the board and, uh, as a delegation, which is usually, to me, the best way to do it, have them as a delegation get the questions answered if council has them. Uh, Councillor Hoffman and then Councillor Julik. Thank you, Mayor Kukaka. Um I actually agree with Councillor Norbury. I don't see any reason to delay the lease. Uh, I have no problem with adding more programming, but I don't think that those are mutually exclusive. That if you're running programming through the community center or even in the youth center or during other hours, no issue. Whether they're the right people to do it or the space gets used in another way, I think that's all good. But I just look at the youth center from trying to state back, try to remember 30 years ago, I'm not very good at it, but it's a place to hang out. And there's an adult there that is willing to kick out the kids that are problems. And yes, there's, there are some kids that uh, make issues for others. Uh, 
I don't see any way around that, whether it's youth center or community center, we have issues with that. And this is a place where there's adults that are in charge. And if something does come up, then it's safer than outside to my mind. So I, I don't see any issue going forward with this right now and asking for other ideas and more information or expanded uh, hours or services or whatever. We can have that discussion, but I'm prepared to go ahead with this today. Councillor Gillick. Um, so just to clarify, I think I was of the mind of Mayor Kakauka is that the de deferring or not approving the lease tonight, it's not that I, I would never do that, but from, and when you talk about um, something stopping other programming from happening, the way I understand the lease is it does stop it. If, if the Youth Services Society or their staff member does not um, and negotiate or initiate those conversations, we can't, as the District of Tumblr Ridge, use that room. Um, if they decide that they don't want to open that room for somebody else to use the climbing wall, that's that's not an option. So for me, it's those kind of things that I, that's the reason I would like to defer it or have the conversations. I absolutely believe that we need a youth services or we need a youth center. I, that's not my concern. My concern is, that what if there is another organization who would be willing to take this on, who is able to make more things happen? I think that in my experience, this uh, board has gotten a little bit stagnant. And, and I say that in, in what I see happening there or what I get told by other people in the community. Now, maybe it's a matter of me having to go down there and spend some time, I absolutely agree, but I don't think it hurts to have them come forward to council and give us some feedback. Um, because maybe my concerns are unfounded. So that's why I would like to defer it. And, and while I have the mic, I will make a motion. Uh, just give me a second, I got Council Nobury. Okay. Council Nobury. Thank you, America Kalka. So still, uh, so I want to talk a little more about uh, deferring this motion. I'm concerned if we defer this, we're sending a message to the Youth Services Society that we will not approve your lease until you come to terms with what we want from your society. And I don't think that's something that we should be doing. I think if we want to get into discussions in good faith, we make these two separate issues and we continue with their lease. And then we talk about how we can support them in supporting our, our youth in the community. Because by deferring it, I, I believe that sends us a bad message. And to Councillor Julek's comments about um, another organization or another, another society, it may very well but may worry, excuse me, that it may be true, but until they come forward, I don't think we should be, you know, always having a what about conversation, you know, like what about this, what about that, until someone comes ahead and has something real to, to give us a bird in the hands worth two in the bush. And um, I think we should be moving forward and having a separate discussion. Thanks, Councillor Norbury. Uh, I got myself and I got Councillor Julek. So uh, I don't disagree with Councillor Hoffner, Councillor Norbury. <clears throat> the reason I mentioned in regards to the deferral gives an opportunity for us to have a discussion with the board. I, I see both your points and valuable points that you both raised, and I, and I agree with you. I, I mean, it, it, we're, we don't want to stop the youth center from operation. I mean, I don't think a deferral would do that, but maybe it sends that wording out there that Councilman Barry just mentioned. So um, I, I, I definitely I agree with you guys, both your guys' comments. So, And again, I mean, I think uh, I don't have a youth. Uh, I have a youth living in my house. And I hear, I hear some of the concerns there, but I think again, it, you know, you can't. There's a multiple different age groups that use it, with different aspects of what they want to see, and, and I think they have to engage too, or even the parents have to engage to assist that through, and not just leave it to the amount of volunteers that sit on the youth society board or their their person that runs it on their behalf. I think you know people also have to get engaged <laughs> to assist that. But, Councillor Julik. So my only concern about. If we get into it for three years, then we're in it for three years. And we've been in it for however many years already. So uh, obviously I'm, you know, I'm willing to do some of the work on my own. I hear what you guys are saying. I still have those concerns. Um, for me, it, it just makes sense to defer it so that we have the conversations and to see where they're at. And maybe they do reach out for help, um, but they didn't ask for any money this year saying that they had enough money, which, which says to me, you know, I'd like, I'd be interested in knowing 
why that money's there because the money was given in order for them to do things and so why weren't those things done you know what i mean it's it's those pieces and and i absolutely agree with you councillor norbury and and councillor hoffman if we can help with that but we haven't had those questions come back and to my knowledge that hasn't been something that staff has been approached about and when there's concerns within the community and this isn't just recent concerns this is ongoing concerns that I've had from parents whether it be in the in the teen center itself or even getting access to the teen center so um, I would still like to defer it and I can make the motion and then we can decide from there. Um, this is, I've worked on plenty of nonprofit boards. I know the work and the effort and everything that goes into this. So this is not slamming them. This is to me an opportunity to have a discussion with them and say, maybe you haven't heard these concerns, but I have as a town councillor, what can we do to make this better? So if I can make the motion now, I will. Yep, go ahead. I make a motion to defer this until after we have invited the TRYSS to have to come and talk to council whether in a private does it have to be a, in a public meeting um, and and then make the motion after that meeting okay second on a deferral councillor Klikosh discussion councillor Nobury thank you Mayor Kalka I'll be against the deferral um, I think councillor Julik you, you I'd like to make a point to councillor Julik we've all sat on Nonprofit boards were volunteers, and the message that this sends is that we are holding their lease hostage until they come to our terms. 100% against. Any more discussion? Uh, before I go to Councillor Julek, um, I, I won't support it, and, and the reason I won't support it, just because we're supporting the lease, there's, there is uh, um, parts of termination in the lease, and there's lots of it. I'm not getting in there. It's not a concept that I even want to think about. <clears throat> I will blame myself as a council in the previous council, that we never asked staff to reach out to set up a delegation in regards to the board from the youth center. Um, to me, we, you know, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I mean, don't have youth center homes, so you don't, not everybody comes up and talks to you about what happens at the youth center or what doesn't happen at the youth center. Um, so sometimes it's something maybe council has to give the initiative that we want to meet with some of these boards so they actually can come in and, and update council on what they're looking for. Usually when they're not looking for funds, council doesn't hear from them. And when they're looking for funds, they usually come as a delegation because they're explaining why they want the funds. So, you know, when they don't need the funds because of their operating, is their overhead's low enough or they have enough in, the, in their accounts to keep them uh, going, we don't hear from them. And I think sometimes that's our fault for not engaging them and, and opening up the door stating we would like to hear from them. Uh, sometimes it's us that, you know, have to reach out to you. And it doesn't hurt them to reach out as well, but I think sometimes it has to come from council. But, Councillor Julik. And I guess... And I know this isn't necessarily the back and forth thing, but I would just disagree with you, Councillor Norbury. I've been on the nonprofits, and I wouldn't see this as a message that council isn't supporting them. I would say this is a message that council has questions. And yes, is your initial response a little bit being perturbed? Absolutely. <laughs> Do I think it's a bad thing? I, I don't. And I say that as somebody who's, who's served on a lot of those. So anyways, I'll be voting in favour of it. Thank you, Councillor Hoffman. I think we've discussed that. I'd be happy to support a request for them to send a delegation, but I don't see any reason why to delay the lease. I, I can't imagine the answer or the circumstance where I'm going to say that the net positives of this organization running, even as is, doing nothing else isn't a net positive for the town. Go to it. We'd love to talk to you about other things that we would like to see. Okay. Any more discussion in regards to the motion for deferral? You can vote any which way you would like. You guys make good points. <laughs> yeah, well, you, again, it's, you have a vote any which way you want to vote. Okay, okay I'm going to call the question on deferral. All in favor of deferring the motion? Okay, opposed? Motion is defeated. Okay, so we're back to, uh, is there any more discussion in regards to the Tumbridge uh, Youth Service Society lease agreement renewal? Okay, call the question. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hoffman. I seen the light flashing. <laughs> I was going to buy right past you. Uh, I actually would like the second motion that we were talking about. I would like to ask the delegation. Uh, well, I got a motion on the floor first, and then we just defeat that motion. We defeated the deferral, but we still have a motion on the floor oh, for the bad. lease agreement. Okay. Any more discussion in regards to the lease agreement renewal? Okay. Call the question. All in favor? Carried. Councillor Hoffman. 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I actually would like, if it has been that long since they've come, I, I think it's a good idea to uh, ask them to, to send a delegation for just a general discussion okay. of what they do and what their plans are for the coming year or three. Okay, so the motion to staff would be for them to reach out? Invite the delegation from the Youth Centre to, to Council. Thank you. Seconder? Councillor Julek? Any discussion? Call the question, all in favor. Carried. Okay, 9.6, Tumble Ridge Curling Club lease renewal. Report dated March 20th, 2023 from the facilities manager regarding Tumble Ridge Curling Club lease renewal for approval. Recommendation, Councillor Dussault. Uh, that Council directs administration to renew the Tumbler Ridge Curling Club lease agreement for a three-year term commencing October 1st, 2022 and ending September 2025 and that council approves the renewal lease agreement as presented. Seconder. Councillor Julek. Discussion. Call the question. All in favour. Opposed. Carried. 9.7 Aero Vending machine, uh, machine Agreement. Report dated March 20th, 2023 from the Facilities Manager regarding Aero Vending Machine, Aero Vending machine Agreement. Councilor Julik. That Council directs administration to renew Aero Vending Agreement for a three-year term commencing November 1st, 2022 and ending November 1st, 2025 to supply vending machine services in the Aquatic Center and Community Center Lower Lobby and that Council approves the Aero Vending Agreement as presented. Seconder, Councillor Clickash. Discussion, Councillor Julik. Has, I'm wondering if anybody else has ever inquired to the possibility of adding machines and does this lease prohibit Anybody else, if they were interested in um, coming forward with a proposal? Ms. Torval. <coughs> Thank you, Council. Uh, no, not to, not to my knowledge. There hasn't been anyone else that's, that has um, asked about putting machines in the, the, the community centre. Does this prohibit anybody else if they were to come forward with a proposal to the District of Tumbridge? It doesn't prohibit, no. Okay. Any follow-up? Good? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Any more discussion? Call the question, all in favour? Carried. 9.8 Tumbridge Lions Club Bingo Exempt Event. Report dated March 20th, 2023 from the Manager of Recreation seeking the approval of the adjustment of Tumbridge Lions Club Bingo Exempt Event. Recommendation. Councillor Julik. That council approves the request for adjustment of Tumbler Ridge Lions Club Bingo Exempt Event to include setup and takedown of tables and chairs. Seconder, Councillor Clickash, discussion. Okay, call the question, all in favour? Carried. 9.9 NDIT grant application for w, uh, Wolverine Nordic Mount Society, the Empress Challenge. Report dated March 20th, 2023 from the Director of Economic Development and Tourism seeking council support for the NDIT grant application by the Wolverine Nordic Mount Society. Recommendation. Councillor Dussault. That council supports an application by Wolverine Nordic Mountain Society for the NDIT Festival's funding grant. Seconder. Councillor Klikash. Discussion. Councillor Julik. Um, I'm just going to ask this question, although now that I've read the recommendation, which I didn't do before the meeting, I just <laughs> looked at the agenda. Um, this is for a specific grant for the Emperor's Challenge and it's for the festival's funding. Yes? Yep. Any more discussion? Call a question. All in favour? Carried. 9.10 Travel Pre-Approval, report dated March 20th, 2023 from the Intern CAO, Director of Corporate Service regarding Travel Pre-Approval. Recommendation please, Councillor Julik. That Council pre-approves travel expenses for the Mayor to attend Ministry and other government meetings in Victoria, BC for the purpose of conducting business on behalf of Tumbler Ridge. Seconder, Councillor Dussault. Discussion, Councillor Julik. 
I'm, I'm just kind of surprised that we don't have a policy in place already for this. Like, I, I, and obviously government's going to be different than like a regular business or whatever. But my thought is your mayor, it comes up you as mayor makes a decision that it's important for the business of the district of Tumblr Ridge. Um, I wouldn't, like, I, I agree, like, it doesn't make sense for you to come every time, but, so I'm just wondering if we could do this an easier way. Like, I guess for me, I'm trusting you as mayor. I don't know, maybe we have a policy that we review, but that doesn't even feel right. I just feel like this is a simpler way to do this for you. Yeah, uh, I guess we go to staff. I don't know about a policy. I know previous, and I think I just used it for that in regards to having uh, this put in front of council. One of it is is being transparent. You know, there's I've had numerous meetings um, with staff and other uh, community stakeholders, BCMS, Northern Health, Kenema Cole, um, regular residents, and stuff like that. In regards to some of the concerns that are happening within the within the municipality, I think. It's, we, we go to the UBCM, but sometimes you have to reach out and go down to these ministers and meet them meet them there. Uh, you get 15 minutes at the UBCM, but uh, go back to staff. My understanding is we need approval. I uh, wanted to be transparent, but council can say that maybe, you know, you were just there a month ago. Maybe it's not worth spending another, you know, I mean, we don't have a cost here because we're waiting for approval on these um, meetings, which will get the cost in front of council. But we've got to make sure it's, it's well use of taxpayer dollars, and that's why council is here is to make sure that. You know, we have policies for the FCM, the UBCM, the NCLGA. Um, in regards to the to mayor just traveling, I believe <clears throat> for emergency purposes, I can travel, um, talk with staff, and having it come back for, for later approval. But I think being transparent with council and the reasons why we're going in, and, and it's in our background, um, I believe. But Ms. Torval, maybe there's something there and I don't know about it. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, what Council is approving tonight, or, or what, what we're asking for approval for, is, is, is for the travel expenses. It's not so much as the attendance at meetings, because um, the Mayor could attend these meetings. Uh, like I said, he, he's just done some in town, so he didn't come to you for approval for those ones. But for this one, because of the travel expenses, uh, and it's coming from your budget, so you need to uh, to approve that. So uh, that's where the transparency lays. Uh, Councillor Hoffman and Councillor Julik. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have no issue with this whatsoever. Um, I think there's lots of opportunity for transparencies, and I think this one also gives you another layer with accountability. If you're telling me you need to go to this meeting and you approved it and you went, I'm perfectly fine with the person that's deciding to go to this is accountable for going to this. So if this facilitates you doing the business of the town, by all means, I'm good with this. Okay, Councillor Julik. Yeah, I'm totally in favor of it. I just thought there might be um, something simpler. So um, just to get some clarification though, when um, Ms. Torville said that it's coming from our budget, like do we have a specific budget line for travel for council? We have an amount there, yeah. Okay, so we're using that. And so this amount would come out of that amount, and then if we needed to increase that, because you had to funds. do 10, you would It'd come back. Okay, thanks. And I think that's what Mr. Orville spoke to, is there's a budget, and there's a budget line, and staff understands that the FCM has policy, the UBCM has, so to me, when they, like the FCM is mayor and up to two councillors, they budget for three people going, maybe only two people go, maybe only one goes, and it's the same as the UBCM, so sometimes there's funds there, but again, we're, I'm asking for, for approval from us, for, from council as a whole, is to allow me to use some budgeted dollars to, to pay for travel to go to Victoria. And that's only if the meetings are approved by the ministers. They might not set a, a time or are unavailable to meet. I mean, I just think it's time to, to, to get some information from them and hopefully um, have their support and, and dialogue and we get something back out of it. I got Councillor Noberry and then Councillor Dissot. Thank you, Mayor Kalka. Um, I support uh, this recommendation on the floor. I think it's uh, vital for us to have as much communication with ministries as we can, as there's a lot more resources and opportunities um, available to us if we get the ministry on our side or even just, you know, just help us out. Um, my only comment would be, do we want to limit this only to the mayor? Like, what if we wanted to open this up to a, a councillor? Um, and I guess maybe I'll ask the mayor if he wants backup. Um, because it could also be a good resource to have like that second person in the room that maybe a speci uh, have speciality in a particular area. So, like example, like Councillor Julek would probably speak very well about tourism in our community. Um, 
yeah, that's my only thoughts. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's up to council. I thought myself because it, to me, it's it, there's going to be a set agenda to the to the ministers. That, again, we're waiting for approval on what ministers are willing to meet. Um, but there's set of, set things which I'll send out to council once we know the ministers that, we're, that will accept the meeting. Um, but there's sec there's separate asks. I don't think we need backup. This is just my personal opinion. Councillor Dassault. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say I, I support this. This uh, I don't see any issue with this whatsoever. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion in regards to it? Okay. Call the question. All in favor? Carried. Schedule of meetings. Uh, anything to add from staff side? Ms. Torval? Thank you. Just wondering if council would like to continue on with the bylaw zoning workshop, uh, maybe the 4th of April. Would that work for everyone? I know they're, they're asking when we can get back at it again. Council? 4th of April work for council. Three. Councillor Hoffman. Councillor Noxana. Yes. This the say the fourth of April is the same as the ECE open house. <coughs> okay. Councillor Norbury. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. ECE open house. Councillor Norbury. Yeah. So we have um, something set up between two and three that day to uh, uh, for a presentation by the YMCA and um, Northern Lights College from two to three on that day, but. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Torval? Um, maybe I could suggest a third. And then that way it can be like early, mid afternoon, and then lead up to your council meeting that night. Would that work better? Um, Councillor Julik. I just wonder the time frame. Like, I feel like we didn't hardly make a dent. So if we did an hour and a half again, I wonder if we would just be back at it. I wonder if it's a whole day thing. And I would hate to do. Uh, and, and maybe the rest of council can ha have a different opinion, but my concern, I would, I was gonna ask if we were gonna do a full day or at least a, like a nine to three or a nine to four possibly. I don't know what that looks like if we need that much time, but to give ourselves a lot of time. And I wouldn't wanna do that on the third because I think we'd be, <laughs> I think we'd be zoned out for the council meeting. <laughs> I guess, Mitorva, like what time stretch we're doing? I had the same feelings as Councillor Julik. Uh, we, we had an overview, uh, a light overview in the last one we, then when we met with them. So if you'd like a full day, we can we can certainly schedule that and uh, start in the morning, we'll say, and then see how it goes, get through the day, and might be half a day, might be full day. I wonder if we should just send out a doodle poll. That way it gives a chance for everybody to check their schedules. Uh, just okay. make sure I understand the third, or sorry, the fourth, uh, depends on what time it would run to. Sounds like there's maybe some information coming about an open house. Okay. So I'm not sure what council thinks of that one. Councilor Julik? I think if ECE's from 2 to 3, and if we started at 9 and had just like a half hour for lunch or work through lunch, like, I mean, I don't have a problem working through lunch, you know, without, you know, some councillors have to go for dessert, but they could go for dessert and we could still be working. But I see <laughs> Councillor Noxana had her hand up. Councilor Noxana. Um, thank you. The fourth during the day would potentially be okay, but I have meetings that evening, so I'd be out. So I think it just instead of talk, I think we just send out a doodle poll, uh, put up, pick a few different dates, yeah. times, and send that to council. I think that gives everybody an opportunity to check their schedules if it's at home or, or whatever to make sure that there's availability for it. I mean, obviously, if we can't get everybody, then so be it. But, you know, I, I don't think weekends are out. That's my personal opinion. I mean, if it has to be a Saturday, but if we can just put a few options together for council and send out a doodle poll. Is that okay with council? That way gives everybody a chance to check the schedules. So. Okay, Councillor Julik. Um, I just noticed as I'm looking at this, we have Let's Talk on the 19th, and so I would wonder if staff thought that maybe we should do it before or after Let's Talk. Like, I'm just wondering, our Let's Talk is full? Do you think, or do you think if we did the zoning bylaw, we could maybe squeeze something into the zoning bylaw if we had some questions we wanted to ask first 
the community or is that a whole other day thing? That's another, uh, that still has to go back out, I believe. Oh, okay. still, uh, this is just with council and then it'll go back out for uh, um, residential input. Ms. Yeah. Torval? That is correct, yes. There will be public consultation after council has done their contributions. Okay. Okay, so that's what we'll do as a doodle poll, and then if counts can please watch your emails and reply back to staff on that. And then that way a date can be selected. Uh, budget meetings, Ms. Torval. I know we have one next Monday. Yes. And nothing marked for April. Do we have any idea um, if we're going to need more? We're going to wait and, until Natalie's uh, gets through it on Monday. Yes, that's that's the uh, the idea was to wait and see how things pan out on Monday at Monday's meeting and then we can go from there. Okay, thank you. Okay, budget meeting. Yeah, on the twenty seventh. Oh yeah, five. Okay, nothing more for scheduling meetings. Okay, notice of motion. Any notices of motion from council? Okay, I have one that um, council directs staff to do a summer road policy. Summer road policy? Yeah, if you need clarity, I can answer that later. Can't debate the motion, the notice of motion. <laughs> but reach out to me, I can explain it. Okay, any more notice of motions? Okay, uh, and we're gonna go to notice motion uh, 10.1. Uh, before we read the recommendation, uh, ATM at the Community Centre at the March 6, 2023 regular meeting of Council. Council so brought forward the following notice of motion. Before the notice of motion is read, I have to declare conflict. I declare the conflict due to I have uh, possible procurement interests. Councillor Judith will say it, please. <clears throat> so if I can get a recommendation. Uh, Councillor Dussault? Uh, that a report is brought back in regards to having an ATM at the community centre. Seconder? Uh, by Councillor Hoffman. Any discussion? <laughs> Councillor um, Dussault. Yeah, I was just... I was just wondering if there was any information available on that right now or if Ms. Ms. Torville has any information on that? Ms. Torville, do, is this motion sufficient to get some information brought back to council? Yes, I don't, we don't have any information at this point because we need to wait until the motion was actually uh, passed to, uh, to move forward. So if the motion is passed tonight, then we will get information and bring back a report to council. Okay. Anything else that you require from me to move forward on this? Any other information? No, I, I count, or Ms. Torville just said we needed to pass the motion and then we can go forward with that. Okay. I would imagine somebody will reach out. Oh, I see Councillor Norbury has a question. But sorry to finish, um, uh, Councillor, <laughs> do so. Yeah, we just need to do the motion so that staff can go ahead and, and do the research. And I would imagine, yeah, the motion's on the floor. So, uh, Councillor Norbury? Thank you, Councillor Julik. Um, I was hoping Councillor Tussaud could give us a little more um, explanation as to the need that she has been been made aware of for this. Um, I, to be honest, I struggle a little bit because there is an ATM across the street. There is an ATM at the um, credit union as well as the gas station. And I'm just kind of curious, a little more information about like what specific need are we missing? Is it that we need the, we need this, the drop-ins need cash and they need it right away? Or is it for like the Lions concession? Just a little more background there to, to sort of get it across there for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duso. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Councillor Norbury. Yes, I have been approached by um, by the Lions, also by uh, hockey teams. Um, when we do have the concession, it is a cash only there, and uh, a lot of the problem can be that. Um, the, the bank is too far, they don't want to go that far. The grocery store doesn't open till 10 a.m. And on, on a Sunday morning, it doesn't open till noon. So it makes it very hard for people to have cash right there and then. So they, um, it was brought up to see if, 
it would be possible to have an ATM put in at the uh, community center. I don't know if that answers your question. All right, any more discussion? I'll call the question, all in favor of staff getting us a report? Uh, any opposed? Okay, so uh, Councillor Noxana is opposed. Thank you. If somebody can pop their head in and ask the mayor to join us again. Huh? Leave him out there. <laughs> Question and answer period. Ms. Torval? my fun. All right, that's fun. I miss councillor's business, so uh, just see, I just seen uh, Councillor Dussault's name, so I kind of skipped past that one. So councillor business, councillor Norbury. Thank you, Mayor Kakalka. I apologize for not sending in a report from um, the Child Care Task Force meeting. Um, I did want to make council aware that on April the 4th, the YMCA and the Northern Lakes College is going to be hosting an ECE opportunities open house with our in with our high school and we will be in opening that up to the public so essentially what's going to happen is we're going to have um, half an hour of presentations from the YMCA talking about how great it is to be an ECE and then Northern Lights College come in and finish and say hey and oh by the way here's the multiple ways to get educated to follow that great career path and it will be open to the public as well as the as well as having interested students from the high school. So I just want to make everyone aware we should be having a poster coming out pretty soon. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Noxana. Thank you. The Temple Ridge Fellowship Baptist Church is organizing a pie throwing competition as part of the Lions Easter egg hunt. Um, and this will be to raise money for our local food bank. So if anybody is interested, and putting your face forward, let me know, and I can get you in contact with their organizer. Thank you. I heard it's on April 8th. They've already yeah. uh, reached out and asked the mayor to um, be in attendance, and I promise that I will be there, or the acting mayor for the month of April will be there, one of the two. I'm not sure who the it's acting me, mayor right? for the month of April is, but uh, it will be Councillor Dussault. So if I'm oh, out of town, okay. it'll be Councillor Dussault. But I've already, I've already let them know that one of us will respond, or, or be in attendance, and I mean, I right now my schedule is open, but that could change. But I have no problem participating in a pie throwing contest or competition, think, whatever. Uh, fundraise. They're looking for anyone. Yeah. So if more so. counselors want to be involved, let me know, and I can connect you with Michelle because. Well, I heard Councillor Nobury is going to be in attendance. So, Councillor Julik. Sorry, what date was that? I didn't write it. April eighth. April eighth. It's a Saturday. And I think if staff is going to attend to throw pies, they have to pay double. So it's an opportunity for staff to, to partake if they wish. I would think it's, it's out to anybody if, if staff want to stand up with uh, the mayor or the acting mayor or Council Norbury, uh, feel free. Chief Curry, feel free. So the same as uh, Councillor Noxana mentioned, if any other councillor wants to, to reach out, just reach out to Councillor Noxana, but I, I know I was reached out to and uh, said one of us would be there, Councillor do so. <laughs> so I, right now, like I said, I will be able to attend. Um, just all depends on meetings. Okay, is there any more councillor business? Okay, I have one thing and that, that was, um, it was well advertised or maybe not well advertised. Let me, let me rephrase that. Uh, last minute notice given to the district of Tumble Ridge in regards to Northern Health going on diversion. <clears throat> so I did receive an email. I forwarded the email to all of council. Um, we were looking for clarity from Northern Health in regards to something to post out to allow our residents to be aware that there was a diversion or not if there was, there was going to be. 
uh, staff actually um, drew up the poster to make sure we could get it out there. So first of all, I want to thank staff for doing Northern House job uh, to make sure we have a poster to go out to our residents in regards to diversion. Um, in the meantime, the email is going back for us from myself and to Melanie Miracle. She asked for an emergency meeting on Friday. So myself, uh, Ms. Torville, and uh, Ms. Curry, both, all three met with Northern Health. And just some of the things were in regards to the diversion. It was unplanned. Last minute notice, the agency nurse that was supposed to come in and, and have a shift in Tumble Ridge uh, ended up with pneumonia. So was unable to uh, come to Northern BC or wherever she was coming up from. And then another uh, concern was there was a local nurse had a family emergency. So I understand from Northern Health side that you know, things happen and nurses, you know, whether they be sick or they have a family emergency, totally understand it. Um, not that we always agree in regards to diversion and having our residents put at risk or uh, to me putting a strain on our local fire department or our ambulance service. Um, so we did meet. Um, I think we're going to stay in, in great communication with, with, with Melanie and Northern Health. Um, one of the things I've asked her is to uh, have an outlook for a few months, whether it's two or three months, uh, to make sure that they see that there's going to be possibly proper coverage within uh, Tumble Ridge, and if not, to reach out so that council would have the opportunity to have a look at it, whether council supports trying to up uh, a bonus program or something like that to get an agency nurse to sign on to make sure we have coverage within our community. Um, Northern Health, got to be careful what I say here, make sure it's in a minute. So there was some things that we're obviously not allowed to share uh, in an open meeting and it's due to staffing, it's their staff, it's not the District of Tumbridge staff. Um, so I know, it's not, I'm not sure if it's right in here, but I know there is some ongoing training, whether it's with local nurses or, or, or other nurses coming within the area to make sure they're up to, uh, to take over emergency calls. Some are, some are not, uh, have worked in emergency and stuff like that, so they need to make sure they get the training, whether it's uh, in Fort St. John, Dawson Creek, or even shadowing somebody within Dawson, or in Chetwin. So hopefully we see that the staff that they've added to the north, and that's including Chatwin that we share nurses, that eventually we'll see less diversions in Tumble Ridge and hopefully less diversions in Chatwin as well. Um, but that could be an opportunity that we need to discuss in regards to if there's going to be a shortage come summer. Uh, I know previous council, we had to do stuff like that, and uh, that'll be up to this council. Um, but I definitely shared it on Facebook, and I thank staff for, for being able to throw a poster together, something that we could at least get out to our public. So I appreciate that. And just on that note, Northern Health will be at Let's Talk on April 19th. And I think that needs to be well advertised, not only to our residents, but the, the new residents and people are, that are not on Facebook. I think it gives an opportunity for Northern Health to have clarity on their protocols at the treatment, uh, the diagnosis and treatment center. So people understand it. The residents understand it. It's not a, it's not a hospital. It's not a full-time emergency. We don't have beds there that people sleep overnight. And I think that needs to be uh, well known within our community, there's some different opinions of what you can get for a merge in, in, in Tumble Ridge. And I think we need to make sure that they have a, uh, that opportunity to fill in our residents. <clears throat> BCM is, was also uh, asked to attend. Um, I'm waiting back to confirm that BCM will be attending. Um, we should hopefully know either at the end of this week or beginning of next. And we just would need to make sure the gentleman that we, we uh, invited is the new superintendent to the north. So we're just waiting for confirmation that he can make it. And I hope he can as well. Not, again, that's another update for our local residents, uh, new, new residents or even the, the residents have been here a long time and how the procedure is for BCM as well. Because there's been some issues there, I guess, or concerns raised from residents, no ambulance available or, or such. And I know uh, a couple of that happened recently. Sometimes they're on a, on a, a transfer and, they, and they're waiting for a, a cross coverage and. You know, I've talked with the chief, and we, we can all sometimes cross coverage is they're, they're sitting halfway between Tumblr and Chatwin or Tumblr and Dawson. Sometimes co cross coverage is coming all the way into our community, but it turns around on a higher higher uh, graded call. And I think we just need to have that clarity. I mean, we're we're a long ways from a facility. We're an hour and a half by ambulance, an hour and twenty minutes. Um, so I think it's very very important that we make sure our healthcare is is up there. 
and not relying on our volunteers. I, I can only imagine the, the stress that we put on them when I call Chief Curry uh, late Friday afternoon, let him know that we're gonna be on a diversion. And not only are we a diversion with Northern Health, but BC Ambulance. There's, there's things that they have to decide what they're gonna do. And I think they need to be forefront too to understand and better communication between BC Ambulance, Northern Health to our fire department. You know, whether it's through the mayor, or through staff, over, you know, and over to Chief Curry. And I know they're meeting, but I think we need to have it as far out as we can. But um, like I've said before, uh, staff will add these uh, minutes to our agenda, but they're always in a book that's in, in the mayor's office. Feel free, they're very well taken and there's lots of information in there, so. And that's all I have. There was one other thing, I'll come right to you, Councillor Julik, is I was to have a meeting with Anglo, uh, Anglo, uh, Anglo uh, last week and it was canceled last minute. Um, Darren um, should be reaching out to me this week to have a meeting with them, so keep council informed. Councillor Julik. I just wanted to note um, for anybody possibly watching um, that there is a really good report here. Um, uh, Mayor Kakauka's uh, minute uh, meeting with BCEHS and I just wondered if at our let's talk meeting if it would be possible to maybe have a staff member there recording the questions and the answers so that we had some place whether it be on our district website or something like that for quick questions you know like because lots of times through Facebook people are saying well what about this what about that and if we had that information there um, this is what you do if there's a diversion this is what you do like so because sometimes people just get in a panic and then that's the result you know and then that's when people get so wound up and and rightfully so you know I understand that but I just wonder um, I feel like we may get a lot of attendance there so if we could maybe arrange to have a staff member at the let's talk to take notes take minutes whatever that looks like because I really, really appreciated the reports that you included in our agenda yeah I, I would hope it's a well well received uh, let's talk and we have uh, lots of residents out I was hoping I know I haven't had a chat chance to talk with Ms. Torvald, but then we can live stream it as well. I think just gotta look into what our account, what our accountability is, and that was one thing we need to know for BC Ammons, because they need to make sure that they are allowed um, to be in regards to that, to make sure that they're not, there's not a conflict with in regards to patient care. Uh, but Ms. Torvald, staff, taking minutes, making sure we have the questions, answers, that's possible? Yes. Okay. So we'll definitely have staff there. Okay, any more in regards to counselor business? And just, just so everybody's aware with the minutes that are in the agenda tonight and the other ones, it, it's uh, Ms. Torval's staff doing a great job of capturing the meeting minutes. So, I mean, I don't want to take any credit at all when it comes to the minutes there. It's, it's staff that's doing an amazing job to make sure we have all that and, and it's well detailed. So it's definitely helping out the uh, communication to council and, and back to the public. So, okay, if there's no more councilor business, take a resolution to closed. I make the recommendation that the March 20th, 2023 regular meeting of council be closed to the public, pursuant to sub subsection 91C of the community charter to permit discussion on items relating to labor relations and other employee relations. Seconder. Councillor Julek, all in favor? Carried, five minute recess.